Imagine waking up to the sound of a hurricane warning, knowing your home might be at risk. Now add to that the anxiety of soaring insurance costs, potentially leaving you without coverage, or worse, forcing you to sell the very roof over your head. Governor Ron DeSantis is sounding the alarm on a looming crisis in Florida. Millions of homeowners insured by the state's last resort option. Citizens property insurance are vulnerable as storm season approaches. As home insurance rates skyrocket, many Floridians are finding themselves in a precarious situation, especially for those with older homes facing higher premiums due to outdated systems. Just a few years ago, Florida seemed untouchable. With so many people moving here, it felt like the economy and housing market were ironclad, destined to keep rising. But now, we're seeing the exact opposite. Florida is now stuck in a housing crash. The inventory of homes for sale is spiking, and homeowners simply can't afford to live here anymore. On average, homeowners in Florida are paying $11,000 a year for insurance costs, a figure that has doubled over the last three years. Consider what an $11,000 annual homeowner's insurance policy means. For retirees, who make up a large portion of Florida's homeowners, it means they can't afford to stay. Their insurance, property taxes, and HOA fees are all skyrocketing, while their incomes remain stagnant or only increase by a modest 4 or 5% annually, not nearly enough to keep up. This situation could be a major turning point for Florida's economy. Fearfully, we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg. Remember back in 2007 to 2008 when Florida's economy and housing market were devastated by a massive housing downturn? We could be heading towards something similar, if not worse. Back in the last big crash, home prices in Miami dropped almost 50%. Imagine that, a house that was worth $300,000 suddenly plummeted to $150,000 to $160,000 people were devastated. Foreclosures were rampant, with 10% of all mortgages going under. This is the history Florida had to deal with, a history of massive declines and extreme volatility. During 2008, Florida's unemployment rate soared from 3 to 10%. For those who believe Florida is immune this time around, think again. We're starting to see similar warning signs. One major indicator is the surge in new apartment buildings, with many of these buildings sitting empty. The rents in Miami are through the roof, $3,000 a month for a one-bedroom and $4,000 a month for a two-bedroom. These prices are on par with New York and LA. Yet Miami's economy and residents' incomes haven't caught up to these high costs. This is the core problem with Miami's economy and housing market right now. Incomes haven't risen nearly enough to keep pace with skyrocketing rents, home prices, and insurance costs. In Miami-Dade County, the median household income is $67,000 per year. With a rent at this price, the average household is spending about 50% of their gross income on rent alone. That's the highest rent-to-income ratio in America, and it's simply unsustainable. So, Miami has become the least affordable city to rent in America, even more so than New York or anywhere in California. You might wonder how sustainable this situation is, especially with all these new apartment buildings springing up. The truth is, it's not sustainable. Vacancy rates are climbing as more and more apartments sit empty. Landlords are now forced to lower rents to fill these vacancies. This is a clear sign of a market correction, a downturn. When you see luxurious buildings suddenly offering concessions and struggling to find tenants, it's a red flag. In March 2024, it's still referred back to this same issue with its tallest plan tower empty from no rental. The big takeaway from these is the sad reality that it is getting too expensive out there. This article from Wall Street about surplus jobs and surplus bills is proof that many people in Miami and across Florida are struggling to get by. Some people who moved during the pandemic, chasing the dream of a new life in Florida from places like New York or Los Angeles, are now struggling to find their way. There's a growing trend of reverse migration or boomerang migration, where people are starting to move back to the cities they left during the pandemic. This is contributing to more vacant apartments and a surge in housing inventory here in Florida. And this is where the property insurance crisis ties in. With the spike in insurance rates and the increasing cost of living, Living, 
it's becoming harder for people to maintain their homes. This situation is creating a perfect storm in the housing market, leading to more foreclosures and an overall economic strain on the state. Because of this, the number of homes for sale in Florida is spiking. Inventory across the state is 137,000 homes, the highest it's been in four or five years. There is no longer a shortage of homes in Florida, quite the opposite. Back in 2021 and 2022, investors and residents from New York drove prices up. Now, many of these homes are priced at over a million dollars, and many owners can't afford to live in them anymore. The annual property insurance bill in Florida is around $11,759, more than twice the national average of $4,500. Even in Oklahoma, the third most expensive state for property insurance, costs are half of what they are in Florida no other state comes close to Florida in terms of property insurance expenses. Imagine being a Florida homeowner, especially a senior who moved down here years ago. They were used to paying $4,000 or $5,000 a year for property insurance, but now they face an $11,000 annual bill. Their property taxes have also doubled, reaching $8,000 to $9,000 a year. Condo owners are hit even harder with HOA assessments that are doubling and tripling. From all angles, Florida homeowners, especially those living in Miami, are getting crushed. It's really unfortunate because this is ruining lives. Some people have lived comfortably in their homes for years, but now they can't afford them anymore and are being forced to sell. It's a sad and troubling situation. To make matters worse, the state insurance carrier, Citizens, is required by law to increase rates this year by 13% for primary residences, without including coverage change and eventual surcharges. Citizens are the insurance carriers of last resort for those who can't get insurance in the private market, often because they live in flood zones or hurricane-prone areas. Even this state-backed insurance is hiking rates, leaving homeowners with very few options options. Interestingly, while inventory is going up across Florida as people are forced to sell, Miami-Dade County still has a somewhat tighter market. However, even in Miami, this trend is changing. We're also seeing some investors selling off properties. The increase in inventory and the pressure to sell highlight the broader issues at play in Miami and Florida's housing market. If you look at this house in Miami, listed on Zillow, a four bed, two bath house, around 1,600 to 1,700 square feet, sitting on a decent sized corner lot. But you're not gonna believe the price tag, $1.65 million. And that's after a $90,000 price cut. The current owner bought this property back in 2019 for $370,000. So they're trying to make a five times return in just five years. The Zillow description highlights its potential for redevelopment. It's zoned in a way that allows the house to be knocked down and replaced with a four-story structure. The owner seems to think this potential makes it worth $1.65 million. This is a clear example of a speculative owner trying to market the property for conversion from a house to a commercial building. But this approach isn't helping the housing market. Taking a house off the market to convert it into commercial space adds to the housing shortage. And given the struggles with commercial properties I mentioned earlier, this owner might have a tough time selling at that price. Did you know that in Florida, litigation costs are a huge issue? Florida has one of the highest rates of insurance lawsuits in the country. In 2021, a staggering 79% of all homeowner insurance lawsuits in the U.S. happened in Florida. Impressive considering it has less than 9% of the total U.S. population. What does this mean? It means billions of dollars are being siphoned from insurance companies into the hands of attorneys. Drive by a fancy restaurant and see those big trucks and luxury cars. Those are often driven by contractors and attorneys who are thriving because of these lawsuits. This is not a bash at all contractors and attorneys. But let's face it, some exist just to take advantage of insurance companies. When a homeowner in Florida has an issue, it's not just a simple call and payout scenario. Contractors often get involved, tapping directly into insurance payouts and controlling the process for their own benefit. 
And if they don't get what they want, they've got attorneys ready to push through lawsuits. The system in Florida heavily favors those who sue insurance companies because if they win, the insurance company pays their legal fees. This leads to a flood of lawsuits, even some that might be considered frivolous. The result? Insurance costs keep going up, exacerbated by the challenges brought on by events like COVID-19. Also, in Florida, when roofs need repairs or overhauls, it's a big deal. Unlike in many other states where repairs are straightforward and not too expensive, Florida's had a different story. Its laws created an incentive for contractors to cheat. For years, lawmakers tried to fix this. Finally, by the end of 2022, they made some significant changes, cracking down on abuses like inflated insurance claims and one-sided legal fees. Did you know these reforms had been attempted before? Several bills over the years failed to pass because of political divides. It's frustrating because party lines often blocked these needed reforms. But in 2022, things shifted, partly due to public dissatisfaction with how things were managed, especially during COVID. Before these changes, costs were skyrocketing. The pandemic and government spending policies drove up prices across the board, including repairs and roofing, by as much as 50 to 60 percent. Insurance companies, which had been collecting premiums based on lower repair costs, suddenly faced massive bills. Legislative changes have been key. They've cut down on legal costs associated with fraud and litigation, reducing insurer defense expenses from a whopping $1.6 billion dollars in 2022 to 739 million dollars in 2023. And that's expected to drop even more in 2024, following a wave of lawsuits at the end of 2022 when these laws were about to change. On top of that, the state's insurance market saw a major improvement in underwriting losses, from $1.8 billion in 2022 down to just $190.8 million in 2023. So if you're looking to buy a home, there are a few things to keep in mind, especially if the house has older mechanical systems like heating, roofing, electrical, and plumbing. Even if you're not in a high-risk area for storms or flooding, older homes in Florida can still pose higher insurance risks and may be priced accordingly. Generally, newer homes tend to have better insurance rates and utilities. However, don't overlook older homes that have been completely renovated. If a property has had a thorough inspection and all its systems have been updated, it could still be a good choice. It's a complicated issue that has hit Floridians hard. Even with these reforms, the challenges remain significant. People are rightly frustrated and the impacts are still being felt. What are your thoughts on this issue? Share them below and let's discuss this. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and click on the bell icon to turn on your notifications whenever we upload new videos on this channel.